definitely, I think manifestation when you were a kid is like so powerful. When you were like a child and you want to do something and you say it out loud and, and end up happening. Like I see so many people that have this story. They all, oh, when I was a kid, I want to do this. And I'm, now I'm doing it. Fantastic. I appreciate you doing this today. Thank you so much. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm Adam. And this is a podcast about you and your journey in music. And uh, we'll talk about the song you have coming out, Attitude, as well. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing. I know uh, this will be off the record. You don't, I know you don't want to talk about, you know, the previous stuff, but do you mind just telling us where, like, would you care to talk about it? Like if, where you were born and raised and kind of how you got into music originally, or do you not want to stay away from that all together? Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about it. It's okay. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, we're not going to go into your, your career there, uh, but, but I, but I didn't know if that's just kind of part of it. If it just, if you just mind. About yes, yes, it it'll come naturally. It's okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Thank you again so much. Thank you too. <laughs> Amazing. So for uh, first off, tell me, Natalie, where, where, uh, Natalia, where were you born and raised? I was born in Brazil and raised in Brazil as well. <laughs> okay. Well, what was it like? I know you've been in the States for like 10 years or more, correct? Yes, yes. It was, oh, it was good. I mean, I had... I did things that kids nowadays cannot do, like play outside and things like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had a lot of fun, dance. <laughs> That's cool. You weren't on your device 25 hours a day or <laughs> you, know, no, you, no. you weren't on the phone for half the half your <laughs> life like most kids are. Um, that's funny, but um, were you? did you come from a musical household at all? You have, I mean, you have incredible voice. You know, my, my grandfather, he was a musician. He he used to feed his family, you know, uh, with, with music. He would like have my daddy going with him to all the concerts and stuff that he would throw. And he would also build instruments. So I oh, think he would it, build instruments. That's yeah. amazing. Like what type of instruments yeah. did he build? Uh, saxophone, guitar, wow. things like that. I still, we still have his saxophone that he built like years ago at my auntie house. <laughs> I have wow. a picture. In, I have a picture with it too. But yeah, cool. it, it's, it's it's it runs in the blood. <laughs> Amazing. So you started music very very early on. It sounds like. Yeah, actually, I first started dancing, and then I I always liked to sing, and I told my dad one day, Daddy, I think I can sing, and then I sang it to him for the first time, and then he saw the potential, and, and he was like, Natalia, you gotta be ready for when an opportunity comes. You need to to take it and be ready for it. So he uh, took me to dance classes and acting classes and singing and piano and all that, those things, because he thinks that when opportunity comes, you gotta be ready for it. You cannot let it go because you're not ready for it. So he he really was my support. Yeah, it sounds like he really no. prepared you, right? For he knew, he knew there was something special there. He knew he had an incredible talent and he wanted to make sure that you're prepared uh, when yeah. the time came. That's amazing. And uh, and I loved it. You know, that's not something that you know parents force into the. I loved it. That that's, that's that makes me. It's my passion. <laughs> yeah, you talked about playing. So you started dancing, but you you spoke about piano. Is that something you started playing early on as well? Yeah, I took I took a few lessons. Yeah, I can play a little bit. I'm not master, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you I can get by. I play cool. guitar as well. I play guitar as well. Oh, how how old were you when you started playing guitar? I was about 14, 15 years old. Wow. Did you write <laughs> songs that early on too? I started writing songs when I started my career professionally. Okay. That's when I, yeah, that's when I felt the need to write my own songs and write my story. That's when I started. Wow. And you've been in the States for about 10 years now. What took you, um, did you leave Brazil to come to the United States? Yes, for first I came to visit and then I saw an opportunity to start my career here. I met Charvet the Dunk, I'm Corinne, the team and CEO. And he believed in me and also his producers and all that. That's how everything started and I stayed here because everything worked out. Yeah, wow. Okay, so you, you met this person and then you ended up were you meeting different songwriters and kind of put in different uh songwriting situations like that to like yes, you know, was, so that's kind of how your career began here in the states 
Yes, I was actually sending my songs and videos to a lot of contacts that I could find while I was in Brazil. And this a &R, his name is Shara Boy, he, he, I sent my stuff to him and he introduced me to Charvet the Don, the CEO of Concord Entertainment. And that's how everything started. Wow. That's, that must have been a big moment, right? I mean, to get yeah. that type of validation and really get your career kicked off here uh, in the United States. Wow. Definitely. Yeah. When you want something, you got to go for it. <laughs> for sure. Uh, what was there like, a, aside from that, I mean, I'm sure that was a validating moment for you. Uh, but did you put out like a song or something that kind of then really validated that your, your, you know, your career and in your choice to stay here in the United States? So yeah, I had uh, a few songs already that I had released and I was doing shows in Brazil mm -hmm. and everywhere. Like I was touring the whole country. So uh, they saw the success I was having. So they wanted to bring it to America. Wow. And once <laughs> you got here, like, I mean, you've put out a couple albums and a few EPs. Yeah. And um, so once you got to America, was it different, you know, releasing songs and playing here at, versus when you were in Brazil? Totally. It's like I had to start it all over. That's I bet. How I yeah. Because it was everything was new and how the music works here is completely different. You have to make a lot of songs. You got to have a lot of attention to even start doing shows. And that's what I, I had to face starting over. Mm -hmm. that, must have been, that must have been difficult because you already had, you know, success coming into it. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I got to like start now from scratch again, essentially. Right. Yes, but I didn't mind that because it was my dream since I was five years old. I grew up telling my parents that I'm, I'm going to be a, a superstar singing in the United States. I'm going to live in the United States. Like grow, at eight years old, I used to watch all these movies and, and I was like amazed by it. And I, and I was super fan of Britney Spears, Michael Jackson. And, and I, was, I would see Britney Spears do, throwing a concert and Michael. And I was like, oh my God, I want to be just like them. I want to do that. I want to dance. I want to sing. I want to perform. <laughs> I mean, and, and then to, to years later, I mean, I know we'll get to your, your song, but to work with Tito Jackson, I mean, that's huge. <laughs> it manifest is. that like when you're eight, right? <laughs> totally. I think manifestation when you were a kid is like so powerful. When you were like a child and you want to do something and you say it out loud and, and end up happening. Like I see so many people that have this story. They all, when I was a kid, I want to do this and I'm, now I'm doing it. So yes, yeah. yeah, so I was recording the, the video with, with Tito Jackson. Sometimes I'll look at him like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, like this it's legend. Wonderful. Yeah, no, it's working. I'm working with him. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. The, the EP you put out um, called Bad Girl, was that? put out here in the states is that your first kind of release when you got here that was a single yeah oh yeah i mean yeah it's single yes no i had um never say goodbye but it's not out on the platforms mm -hmm. uh and then bad girl and a few more other songs crazy slow on the floor <laughs> and it kept going okay and then <laughs> I, and then like between that moment i know you put out something in 2020 was that like pre or during the pandemic or like, where did that kind of fall along uh, with, with all of that? Oh, or was uh, I am Natalia? Was that the first, was that, uh, the, did that album come out first? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say the minute we was releasing at the time of the pandemic was pacemaker. Okay. But before that you had the album out. Yeah. Or, okay. <laughs> I, got, I got the times mix. I think I had it screwed up when Don't I was Don't worry, because my memory is awful, too. <laughs> <laughs> so you put out a couple singles, and then you put out an album in 2017-ish? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so what was it like, you know, like, what were you, who were you working with, and what was it like putting out the, the album? Like, most of the production was done by the Transformers, the a and the Discover Me. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and I worked on with Two Chains. I had a song with Two Chains, uh, and other other songs. As I'm not out of the meaning was crazy. Uh, on the floor. 
Well, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was like crazy was what your first number one? Yes, yeah, Sahano on Billboard. <laughs> That's huge. What was that like? It was incredible. <laughs> it's like, it like those moments of, wow, like, oh my God, we made it. We did it. <laughs> yeah. Like did, when you put that song out, did you know there was something special about it? Oh, yes. Because, yeah, I wrote it from my heart. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when it's, I think when it's personal, when it's true, it, it is always special. Yeah. And then to see something that you, you know, you're vulnerable with and you kind of put your heart into and watch it just be you know, embraced by everybody and then make a number one on Billboard. That's got to feel like such a big yeah, accomplishment, you know, obviously. You know, when I, I know when it's special, when it comes easy, like mm -hmm. I have the song and then I, and it's just, if I write that song in three minutes and five minutes, that's it. That's it. You know, <laughs> you know, it's good. You, or, you know, it's going to be a, a big one if it's that quick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What other time, like, do you recall another couple moments where that happened, where you just like sat down and cranked the song out and you're like, wow, like this, this is good. Yeah. Attitude. <laughs> oh, really? Attitude was a fast one. Attitude. Oh my God. Attitude. I got that song. Actually, I was going to write that song for the Jacksons because I was looking for a song. Whoa. So, and then when I got the song and then just came, the chorus came first to me. It just started, it's like it started playing in my head. I don't know where it come from. And then I came, and then I, I know I had to do something with that. And, and that from the chorus and then I developed the whole song. And then my my manager, he was on the phone with Tito Jackson. And I just was like, look, I got this. I already wrote it. And listen to this. And Tito uh, heard my me singing the song. And then after all, he's like, I'm going to be on the record. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but uh, that's how it happened. And then he just uh, was on the record with me. And that was incredible. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So it he started, it. I, that was a, just a quick one. And you knew that they were looking for something. And you're like, okay, I've got this. I've got this really good hook. And then ended yeah. up writing the rest of it. But wow. I was like totally inspired. First of all. What a big honor and opportunity to write for the Jacksons. And, and it just, and I heard this song, this song is incredible. And I just wrote it just that quick. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, to back up a little bit, like after you put out that album and then, mm -hmm. you know, cause the number, the number one was, a, was around the, was that before, that was before the album, correct? Or am I totally getting confused? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think this was single before, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then, so after that album comes out and um, like, you have the album, you have a number one, like, how do you, do you feel like, oh my gosh, I got to kind of follow this up with another big hit or like, what, were, what was your mindset after you kind of make that big accomplishment? Are you like concerned about the next song you put out? Like, oh, is it going <laughs> to do the same thing or, or you don't even think that in your no, mind at all? No, no pressure at all. I just live in the moment and just, <laughs> just things just happen, just flowing naturally, easily. Oh, wow. Okay. So nothing because I've, I've talked to other artists that are like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like I, you, you got to, especially now with like the TikTok songs that are blowing up, like obviously you've had a, a career, a l longevity and everything else, but some people that will put one out, right. And then it like hits and then they're like scrambling, like, how do I do this again? You know, how do I do this again? But because of your experience, it probably you didn't feel the same, the same pressure. No, not at all. Not at all. I think uh, when you get a good song and then you just come and write, to, and write this song, things got to happen naturally for it to be special and, like, and happen in mm -hmm. life. So I just have the mindset that nothing is going to pressure me to doing a song just for it to be a hit. Mm -hmm. But because it's, good, yeah. because it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you write both still in Spanish and English? Mm -hmm. Do you, you, do you, you, you have some songs in Spanish and obviously in English as oh, well. Yeah. Do you, when you go down to write, is it like, do you have, how did, you know, does it come naturally in that way too? You're like, okay, this is going to be a song in English. Cause that even up until your 2020 release, you kind of had both. Yeah. I have, like a version, I have a version of it. Like I, I first I wrote it in English and then I made a version of it in Spanish. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so no, like I, I'm basically just kind of translated or. Change yeah, is that difficult to do? I mean, translate the same song? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, you got to sing it differently or? 
Mm -hmm, because you gotta not only cannot you cannot like sometimes you can't literally translate because it won't sound the same so you just gotta change it around mm -hmm. yeah because you gotta like have the same impact i like to have like a song to be like one flow and if i translate it like like just translate it just like it is it won't have the same feel so yeah right. change it around yeah <laughs> was there a song that you can remember that was kind of difficult to do that I think all of it, it kind of oh, reminds me of what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like made like a puzzle. Yeah, I bet. Because you have all this, you have the whole English song done and you're like, okay, how am I going to, you know, yeah, exactly. You said like write it in Spanish, but then also have it make the same impact, but also be able to present it in a similar way as far as like an inflection in your voice maybe or to sing it in the same, you know, key or timing. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it is. That's exactly how the process is. It's like, <laughs> same way you say. <laughs> uh, um, well, okay, so you get this opportunity to work with Tito Jackson. I, you had a song, another song that came out this year, correct? Before that one? Or because this one's coming out soon. On that 17. was the EP, EP Divination that came before. Yeah, yeah, that was the end of last year or this year? No, I think it was, it was end of, last year. Yeah, yeah, I think it was last year, right? Three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more for timelines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what can you tell me about that EP? Oh, that EP was amazing. It was it's one of the most the, that I'm most proud of because I wrote most of the songs. I wrote all the songs, actually. <laughs> so there are a lot of songs that are very special to me. Pacemaker, of course. Mm -hmm. If I could love me, all the songs are, are real special, real beautiful. Everybody should check it out because it's really good. <laughs> no, yeah, Pacemaker is a huge song. I know it streams um, you know, on, on Spotify and everything really well, but all, same with all the other ones. I mean, Oh Na Na and Love Me, uh, going into that, was that that project something that you, when you were writing it, did you know it was going to become like a full, like, because it's really a cohesive, right? It, I mean, you listen to it through and it makes sense. Like, was that something? that you knew that was going to come out of this or was it you were just writing the songs and then you're like oh wow I'm seeing kind of a theme here yeah actually you never know like what's going to come out until it is done and to you see people's reaction to it but my uh my personal opinion like uh it's, it counts to me of course it counts a lot because we me and my and my manager we choose the songs to put on the EP and I write to it, and he was like, Casey has a very, very good ear for music. So it's like, this is great. And I was like, this is great. This is going. This is not going. This is going. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> I listen to him a lot in the sense because he knows hits. <laughs> yeah, 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 I bet. It's nice, probably nice having someone that has that good of an ear to kind of help you make those choices. Because I bet that's difficult, right? I mean, you probably love all the songs you write, and you're like, well, these all should make the <laughs> oh, album. No. Oh no. <laughs> oh really? You don't. I don't love all the songs that I write. In fact. <laughs> <laughs> I love some songs. Some others like like, oh, that's too silly. <laughs> and then do you not just even do you even present them or are you just like, I'm gonna scratch this? Yeah, sometimes I presented songs I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, yeah, that's part of the game. Well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Other well people like it. Oh yeah God. i mean i guess you just have to see right you're like i'm not yeah. a whole i'm not totally in love with this but someone might be like oh this is a, you know i love this right <laughs> that's right uh, <laughs> well so go the the tito jackson thing like at, like getting to meet him and work with him were you nervous at all going into that or uh not just excited i was just excited no, i was nervous because he's such a gentleman he's so humble so he makes you feel so comfortable so I was, of course, I was very, uh, very honored to be around him and very excited because of all his background. And, and I'm a huge fan of the Jacksons and Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. special, but yeah, he was an amazing person and very, very down to earth. I think all the Jacksons are very down to earth. Yeah. They're very good people. <laughs> so did you have, like, tell me about the process of working with him. Did you have... I mean, obviously you said you had the song, so do you go in the studio then and work on it together with him or how does that process work? No, it was, it was separate. 
I recorded my parts and he recorded his and then they mixed together and, and that's it came up the song, but it was separate. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and then you did a video, right, for the song as well? Yes, recently, <laughs> like last month. Wow, what no, was that like? In Gen- it was in January. I was amazing. We worked with an amazing, amazing crew, and every it was everything so beautiful, and everything everything happened so, so 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 easy. It was so everybody was on the same mindset, and, and it was beautiful. The the music video is beautiful. I can't wait for it to come out. <laughs> is it coming out on the seventeenth as well with the song? Yes, it's coming out on the seventeenth. Same day. Okay. Really- so this probably won't be out before this, or this will probably be out after the video comes out. So can you, we talk about the video a little bit? Like what, like what was the concept behind it? Like, how did you, like what, what's going on in the music video that you can talk to us about? Oh, the song is like, um, first it starts uh, with me uh, getting ready. And then there is this magic uh, disco ball that shows up mm-hmm. out of nowhere, like magical. And then I just kept into the scene where I'm with Tito and everything is bright and everything is dancing and flowing. And the, the dream starts right there. It's like a dream. <laughs> That's cool. Did you, like, okay. And I really, re- and it really reminds me of the moment I was getting ready on the video, how my career started. And it, when I was watching the whole, the whole music video that was done, it really took me back to how I started getting ready myself. And all these things, all these things happening until now with Tito Jackson to the point that I'm at right now. So yeah, it kind, kind of brings of like, like a flashback. You, yeah, you're it's you're kind of being able to reflect on your whole your whole timeline, your whole music career oh, yeah. a little bit. It, it, it really is really a trip. <laughs> yeah. Trip down memory lane. I mean, imagine showing your eight year old self the video and being like, "Hey, this is what your life is going to look like." <laughs> like, oh my goodness, I would cry. <laughs> It's really like I'm living my dream. That's so special. And are you always writing music? Are you always writing new songs? Yes, I just wrote like two new songs. I don't. I wrote a song with uh, the rapper Kid Suda. Oh, and cool. I, and I just wrote a song. Uh, I'm gonna do a, a pretty soon. It's gonna come out. A feature with Stitches, the rapper Stitches. Really? Okay. And are you usually like, because I know you write, obviously you have the song with Tito Jackson, but you sounded like you were just writing a song for, for them, correct? Or, or did, yeah. was it, so is that something that you do quite often is like songwrite for other people or are you usually on most of, most if not all the songs that you write? Yeah, I write for other people. I wrote for, a few years ago, I wrote for uh, the World Cup team of Mexico. For Patty oh, Cantu, Sophia, what's her name? Patty Cantu, Sophia, I forgot, a, I forgot her last name, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. But, but yeah, uh, and I wrote for Santum MTP, he's a, a, a superstar in Vietnam. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, wrote, I write for other artists too as well. Do you enjoy that? Or do you oh, yeah. Prefer, okay. I'm sure <laughs> you prefer writing for your own art. And how do you know if it's going to be a song for somebody else or for yourself? Oh, because usually uh, my manager, he comes, it's like, can you tell you write a song for this person or that person? Can you write it? Can you do it? I I wrote a song for Janet Jackson. I submitted to her and all the, all the I've got a lot of artists here. Wow. So they always come to me, like, if I want to write something. Okay, so you can kind of cater to what their strengths are in a certain aspect or kind of go off what their yeah. sounds are. Yeah, uh-huh. I try to tap into what they would say or what they would sing. It's, it's like being an actor. <laughs> right. Yeah. It sounds like it. you kind of have to figure out what they, yeah, what they would say and what they would sound like and what it would sound like coming from them and then write accordingly. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what, yeah. I love doing that. That's huge, though, to write the song for the World Cup. I mean, that, like, tell me about that a little bit because that's, I mean, the World Cup is massive. Obviously, it's the biggest thing in the world. Yes. There was a World Cup theme for the Mexico team. Yeah. So they played over there, everywhere, and TV, all the everybody. Else. But a few years ago, yeah. Wow. <laughs> was it? Is it wild? Like the first time you kind of heard your song on a, something like that, like a radio station or a t- television or something like that? Do you remember <laughs> like hearing your first first time hearing that? Like what really impacted me uh, 
was the radio station here in Ona Station and also MTV, my music, my music video showing up on MTV. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. It's a dream coming true. That's so wild. Yeah. I can't even imagine what that's like. Just seeing your, you know, you're, you're on the same station and, you know, on the television the, with the, the likes of everybody you probably looked up to growing up. Right. And people can see the hard work, the, the goals behind it to get to that point. And when you see it happening, it's just, it was worth it. It was worth it. You feel like all the, yeah. the nights awake and everything, the work, the hard work, the rehearsals, everything worked out. Yeah, it all came together. But wow, yeah. I mean, you have to, I'm sure there's so many, you know, there's probably a lot of times throughout your career that you're like, uh, do it. Should I keep going with this? Like, and then having to kind of receive those validations again to be like, all right, yeah, I'm on the right track. Exactly. Yes. It pushes you to another level. Yeah. Wow. So you have, you said you've just written a couple more songs, obviously attitudes coming out in a week or 10 days or so. Um, and then is that just going to be a single or do you have another full body of work that you're working on or not sure yet? Uh, for now, we're just doing the single and then I have some other songs to release later. But the total focus now is the single attitude. Yeah, exciting. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. The video, I can't wait to see the video. I've heard the song. I had the opportunity to hear it a little early and, <laughs> and I love what you're doing and I appreciate you so your time much. today. Thank you so much for coming on and, and talking to me about your, your story. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. I have one more quick question for you, uh, Natalia, before I let you go. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Oh, yes. Please never, never give up because sooner or later your work will pay off. You just need to want it with all your heart and work hard for it and think on your mind that you're going to be the best and you will. Bring me the best.